here is the favorite son of Montgomery, Alabama, Hank Williams. Also the father of Hank Williams Jr., the grandfather of Hank Williams III. Hey you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south. More specifically, Montgomery, Alabama, and even more specifically than that, we are at the Hank Williams Museum. Hank Williams is, a, of course, a country music legend from here in Montgomery, and uh, I don't know. I don't know all that much about him and his life. Uh, I'm somewhat familiar with his music, uh, not as much him as a person, so uh, we will learn together. Follow me. is Coigula, donated to the Hank Williams Museum by the Alabama National Fair. Huh. And here it looks like the, uh, you have all three Hank Williams, Hank Williams Sr., Hank Williams Jr., and then there's three in the corner right there. Look at this, this is the car that Hank Williams Sr. died in. And as you notice, a lot of death cars I've seen are, are smashed or, uh, or have holes in them, like uh, Buford Pusser's car or Bonnie and Clyde's car. This car is in absolute beautiful, pristine condition. And the reason is because Hank did not die from a car accident. And I'd actually thought that myself. Uh, but he actually died peacefully um, while uh, sitting in the back seat of heart failure. And the statue outside, this is an actual replica of the statue. This is the bust. It's the same face that the statue has. And the owner was telling me that this hat is a real Stetson that belonged to uh, Hank Williams and that was bronzed over. So that is his actual hat. Now normally they'd have a uh, f funeral video of Hank Williams' funeral playing on this TV. It's the only known footage uh, from the funeral taking, taken with uh, a camcorder. And here's the actual reels. And here is uh, a lot of his records. Apparently died at, and died at 29 years old, which I had no idea that, uh, that he was so young when he died. And apparently in that amount of time, he, he put out more records, put out 200 and, and something records uh, before he turned 29, which is just astronomical. Okay, I was actually pronouncing it wrong. This uh, Native American is known as Kalijah. And uh, apparently the story is that uh, there was an Indian legend of Kalijah where he uh, sat on the edge of a lake waiting for his true love who never showed up and he waited so long that he became petrified and turned into a statue a wooden statue and I, I have to wonder if that's where the old legend of the uh, uh, cigar store Indian comes from all right and there is another Kalijah now these different cases are dedicated to different uh, band members that played with Hank Williams you can see that that dead end and the bow tie that's Lum York his, his bassist who would, I guess, would have a comedic uh, stage character. There's absolutely no denying that uh, Hank Williams was one sharp-dressed man. Dining set that was from a house in Nashville. Apparently all the big country stars hung out and had their private parties, including Hank, of course. Two different cases with some of the clothing in it. You gotta love old country singer outfits. All right, so that was the Hank Williams Museum, a real interesting collection of, of Hank Williams, the quintessential Hank Williams Museum, of course. Uh, I had not known much about him, like I said before. I, I had heard his music, but I didn't know a lot about 
about his life story and how prolific of an artist he was and how you know revolutionary he was for uh, country music. Of course, his son uh, Hank Williams Jr. is you know very very famous in his in his own right. Uh, he has kind of a different different singing style, but if you go to Hank Williams III, he actually sounds a lot like his grandfather and he actually does heavy metal music and country music i'm not really into heavy metal but um, his country stuff is, is actually really really good this is the oldest restaurant in montgomery chris's is 1917. it apparently was one of hank williams favorite restaurants but apparently he wasn't the only one who liked it, as there is a, a, a impressive list of celebrities. Franklin Roosevelt ate here. George Bush and George Bush both ate here. George Wallace, civil rights villain, and Martin Luther King Jr. So this is like the double side of the coin. It's so universally loved that Martin Luther King and George Wallace both uh, both ate here. Oh, Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley ate here. That is that's very impressive. Like I say, Rosa Parks came through. You said that you said Martin Luther King Jr. ate every every Sunday at the Jersey. Come out here and get uh, uh, most of the papers from my grandfather. And, and, um, they became my grandfather and him became good friends. My grandfather was a Greek immigrant. He had problems with the Klan just like Martin King did. So, like I said, I'm part of the Green Party. We get green in your pocket, we are freedom. So uh, that's why I've been a business for 32 years. <laughs> and I leave, you leave all your personal politics alone and sports alone and just serve everybody equally, always. You know, leave everything, leave your personal ones at home and you just do your business. Leave it alone. And that's, and that's what, you know, like I said, you know, all the governors, all the liars, I mean legislators. <laughs> so what were you saying about the, the Coca-Cola? So we're the, yeah, we're the oldest uh, continuous customer for uh, Coca-Cola in Alabama. That's amazing. Uh, and actually when my grandfather died, Coca-Cola catered his funeral. Um, oh, wow. Uh, Alright, look at that. That is uh, Chris's hot dog. It's got chili sauce. What's that? Mustard, onions, and sauerkraut. Mustard, onions, and sauerkraut. Let's give this hot dog a try. Mmm. Mm. That is good. And that chili sauce. That's interesting. It's like spicy. It's almost like barbecue sauce in a way. Very good. Me and my wife got married, and I wasn't allowed to cook that day, so I was able to cook one hot dog. That's me and my wife. We cooked that. That's oh, yeah. One hot dog that we, got, we, we did. Hot dog on your wedding. Yeah. He comes, he's a local guy, uh, and then he, the day he sold Bass Masters in 86, he came and got a hot dog that afternoon, and these lawyers made him a trophy for the most expensive hot dog. Uh, he was a, it was uh, interest rates were real high, mm -hmm. and I think he sold Bass Masters for nine million, twelve million something. Mm -hmm. And he came down here, got a hot dog, went to the pawn shop down the street, and got back to the uh, Bass Masters about four fifteen. He says, "Where you been?" He says, "I went to get a hot dog." Why? He says, "Well, you just lost six hundred dollars in interest getting that check from the bank versus a Friday versus a Monday." And so these lawyers <laughs> made him this trophy, the most expensive hot dog in the world, the sixteen hundred dollar hot dog. Um, my politician is George Wallace, he was a normal customer of ours back in the day. Um, and this is the picture I was telling you earlier of Don Siegelman. Uh, he was running for Secretary of State. And this is a letter, he was a, a former governor. This is a letter from him from the Louisiana Federal Penitentiary. These meetings on the wall here and here were the same meeting that William used to order off of. Uh, you know, 15 cent hot dogs, 25 cent hot dogs. And then I've got a good friend that made, did this painting. He painted this painting actually at the Hank Williams um, grave site. He kind of lived like Hank Williams lifestyle. And you see on the corner where this chip here? Yeah. It's where his wife threw, him, threw this painting at him. Because <laughs> uh, he uh, would show up, at, show up from home at like 6 o'clock in the morning. I try to tell the history of Montgomery through hot dogs. Because you know, um, if you've ever read The Great Gatsby, Jonathan Fitzgerald's from Montgomery. Oh yeah? And F. Scott came here for military training right around 1918, and they would, with the power companies across the street from here, there used to be a dance hall, and they would dance across the street, and they ended up here um, eating hot dogs. Actually, on the third floor of this building, it was a dance studio. 
And Zeno took Zeno Fitzgerald took lessons on the third floor of this building. Oh my goodness. Uh, so um, you know, little Montgomery. There's a lot happening on this block. Well, and then on the opposite end of the block, you know, so one end of the block you have Martin Luther King's Church, where the bicycle that's where the bus boy got started. And then on the other end of the block you have the uh, telegraph sent that basically started the federal the uh, Civil War. So we're kind of proud of this little city. Our, our, we're not always proud about the history, but at the end ends up we've shaped the constitution of our country. First, the state tried to federal rights, which is the Civil War, and then you have the federal responsibility of the people with the civil rights. We're kind of proud of how Little Dexter Avenue here in Montgomery has shaped the constitution of our country. So, you know, our history isn't always great, but you can't forget your history. Absolutely. So, um, we've, we've learned from it, and we need the rest of the country to learn it too. Absolutely. So, well, welcome. Y'all come see me in Montgomery. So, what are the rules here? No loud talking, no profanity, no gambling, no radios, no slugs or tokens, no unattended children. Violators will be asked to leave immediately. You can see where my set is. Yeah, I love, I love the counter that closes. Oh yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen one in real life that does that. <laughs> everything is made right here, so it's uh, it's kind of neat. Is the grill a hundred years old or? Oh no, it's probably thirty. No, uh, this is yeah, I think it is. And um, we had the last one we went through uh, more soup, probably two inches thick. And yeah. <laughs> we get our money's worth out of everything around here. We, we joke around that this right area right here is some of the most efficient square footage in Montgomery. And then you go to the State House, some of the most inefficient square footage in Montgomery. <laughs> and where else would Hank Williams be buried other than the Hank Williams Memorial Cemetery? Here we are. Hank Williams gravesite. There's Audrey Williams over there. Then Hank's grave is right there. The astroturf here around the grave. You can see it's it's been nicely kept up. No one has messed with it. And that's because Hank William Jr. said, please do not desecrate this sacred spot. And I I think he's someone you take seriously. Yeah, 1923, 1953, he's 29 years old, which still gets me. And then uh, his guitar and boots on the grave. He has some of his albums engraved here on the bottom. Mansion on the Hill, Your Cheatin' Heart, Love Sick Blues. And then we got a marble cowboy hat right there. It says Luke the Drifter. I think that was a, a character that he played. I've already forgot how to pronounce it, so I won't I won't attempt it. Jambalaya. I appreciate you uh, coming along with me on this journey to learn more about Hank Williams Sr. Um, I wanted to thank the uh, the staff of the Hank Williams Museum. They were very friendly and accommodating. If you want to check down in the description, it'll show you all the different places I've been. If uh, you'd like to contribute, that information is in the description as well. But for now, this one's in the bag.